Having so many farming games coming at us left and right can make it so difficult to decide what to play next, especially when a lot of them are just rinse and repeat copies of themselves. But I'm here to help you pick your next farming journey, and I'm dividing my picks into beginner friendly, intermediate, and advanced, along with 5 titles that might not be worth your while. Hello you gorgeous human being, it's Miss Bubbles. If you're new here and you love everything RPGs, farming games, and cozy games, you are in the bubbliest corner. Make sure to squish the like and subscribe buttons because I have plenty of fun videos coming up next. And we're starting with our beginner friendly farming games and the first one that came to my mind is Big Farm Story. Now I streamed this and it actually surprised me in the sense that I don't see many people talk about it, but it's actually fun and a perfect way to start playing farming games if you never tried them before. This one's very simple with a linear story and the UI is very easy to interact with. And the good thing is that the world is not that open so it means you're not gonna get lost and everything else is pretty straightforward. It can feel a little bit like a mobile game at times, there is some DLC that it's just cosmetics so you can just skip it really, but I feel like it was actually fun even for me as someone who freaking adores farming games. I needed something that was not too complex where I can just chill and enjoy a farming game and get to know the community around me and Big Farm Story did just that. Next up we have Wildflowers which is insane that I waited until this year to play it and man oh man do I now understand what's the, what the hype is all about. Like no wonder why people speak so highly of it. It's such a beautiful journey where you play as Tara who visits her haven to visit her grandma and quickly learns that hey hello you're actually a witch. The storytelling in this one is amazing, the voice acting is spectacular and every day there is some something new to look forward to. I do have a before you buy for it where I talk about it so if you want to learn more about it that is your chance to do that. And this one just came at the right time where every single game that I was playing before it was just failing to capture my attention in terms of farming games and this one was like yeah no it's not you it's actually the farming games that were releasing that were actually horrible. Another beginner friendly farming game which is more on the gardening side is called Garden Inn. Now this is a sandbox experience where you have a room that you can decorate with plenty of plant pots and you can create different plant hybrids. The plants will take real time to grow so you can always come back to the game and check in on them. While I did not personally enjoy it after the novelty wore off, I know many people loved it and thought it was a good one to get into. It's definitely more on the simplistic side and if you are looking for like the most basic way to start getting into a farming game, which again this is more like planting and gardening, this might be your way in. Now moving to our advanced games, these ones are a little bit more complex, they're gonna have a bit more combat in them, so they are gonna be your way into getting more into the nitty gritty of what a farming game actually is. And we're gonna start with a gushing session about me and my beloved Coral Island. If you have watched my last couple of videos, you will see that I am looking for any excuse to talk about it. Coral Island, just like Wildflowers, made me fall back in love with farming games, and when I sometimes, you know, grow tired of the rinse and repeat mechanics of other games, titles like Coral Island just make me realize why I love this genre so freaking much. Star the Town, the place where you start your farm, is absolutely stunning, there's no denying that, and the gorgeous graphics are accompanied by an amazing cast which makes your time worthwhile. There are so many bachelors and bachelorettes to romance, which will give you analysis paralysis at times, but the gameplay loop itself is so addictive where you can decorate your home, your farm, you can customize your character, you can go mining, diving, fishing, and so much more, and it's all accompanied by a fun storyline. Keep in mind there is combat here, but you can toggle it off if you want to, and the devs have a 2024 roadmap where we're gonna get even more content to explore, so you're in for a beautiful journey. Another one, which is a hybrid between an RPG and farming set in a sandbox open world game, is Dragon Quest Builders 2. This is another one that I will bring up anytime I can and maybe I can manifest freaking Dragon Quest Builders 3 somehow. Please, Square Enix, for the love of God, please give, it, give us that. Anyways, if you don't know, this one is a narrative adventure and the beauty of it is the sense of exploration where you can go to different areas to help the villagers there. You will need to farm to make sure that the 
the villagers are well fed, but you can also collect resources, craft, and enjoy a fun and quirky story. There is combat here which cannot be avoided, but if you play RPGs on the side, this should be easy to get into. Then if you want to play with your friends, you have this massive area where you can build stuff on it together. The graphics are so cute, I love the blocks with the 3D characters, and if you never played Dragon Quest Builders 2, please, please, now's your chance, just do it. Next up, we have Fey Farm, which I wanted to put it as a beginner friendly game, but then the grind does pick up the more that you play, so I was like, you know what, it's probably best to put it as an intermediate one. This one's so magical, and I have mentioned it in my ranking the best and worst farming games of 2023, and I said that it could have been S tier if it wasn't for its very high asking price and the lifeless villagers. But to be fair, I don't always play farming games where I want to actually engage with villagers, so this one is very very again magical it's very cozy where you can play alone or with your friends you can customize your house the farm your character you can catch bugs and fish which is nearly impossible i still have no idea how to fish in this game you can go mining and engage in combat which i believe you can toggle off if you want to the animations are very beautiful in this game and i feel like it got so much hate that it really didn't deserve it so if you haven't checked it out i do have a first impressions before you buy for it where you can learn more about it now when i make my my list videos I usually try to avoid talking about early access games just because I feel like it's unfair to compare a complete game to an unfinished one but I had to make an exception for two of them and the first one is Dincom. This one is the one if you remember I just didn't know how to pronounce back in the day for the life of me. The Australian Outback setting is fun to explore and it gives us so many things that Animal Crossing New Horizons failed and I compare it to that because you're gonna see like from the graphics it does borrow a lot of inspiration from it. The amount of gameplay mechanics you can engage in is insane and the developer just keeps blessing us with more and more updates. I created a for you buy for it when it first launched into early access so I'm gonna link that for you but it has still added so many new gameplay features since then. The combat was pretty difficult when I was playing it so it was a drawback for me so I'm not sure if we have finally a dodge mechanic please let me know if we do because I'd love to go back to it but still I feel like this one is such a fun farming game at least when I played it. You can play it alone or with your friends, so I highly recommend that you check it out. And the other early access game is called Traveler's Inn, and I freaking love this game so much. You run an inn and you slowly expand it, and while it is mainly an inn management title, the recent updates it had emphasize farming and tending to your barn animals, so you can use the resources to cook meals and serve your customers. It starts slow, but as you expand, you get a lot more to do. And the new updates just keep giving us fun new gameplay mechanics, so I can only imagine how much better it's bound to be as 2024 carries on. Now here's a controversial one. For me, I would recommend any day that you play Rune Factory 5 over Rune Factory 4. When I played Rune Factory 4 back in the day, I really loved it, but then I tried to go back into it and I freaking hated it. And when I played Rune Factory 5, I'm just like, I gush over it all the time. So for me, again, I will easily recommend Rune Factory 5 over 4, but I know many of you don't agree and that is okay. Rune Factory 5 is such a fun game for an intermediate farming game lover because it gives you so many fun gameplay mechanics, but it never feels too overwhelming or hard to keep up with. And I love that. The villagers are such cuties. I love getting to know them. And I am planning to start a new playthrough which is very rare for me like usually when i play something i just forget about it but i've been itching to play it again now keep in mind there is combat in this game and then you can also tame some of the monsters that you fight and you can bring them back to help you on your farm and honestly i just i freaking love this game i i do have a before you buy for it if you want to check it out and again definitely play it another intermediate one which i love but i don't see a lot of people talk about is yonder and you know what i'm actually gonna cheat and you're gonna have 21 games that you must play i'm adding to this list grow song of the ever tree which is brought by the same developers that also gave us yonder i freaking love them they're called prideful slot beautiful amazing developers anyways yonder is an open world relaxing farming sim where you're getting rid of murk which is eating up different biomes you can raise barn animals you can master different professions kind of like fantasy life and the world just invites you to explore it whereas grow song of the ever tree is about this tree that died and you're trying to restore it through the power of song so you slowly grow crops on it and you get to customize your village and hire people to run the various shops you can own both of them are such fun time sinks that i feel like not a lot of people talk about so if you've missed them out 
they are on sale most of the time please 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 check them out and next up we have verdant skies here you live in a space colony and your aim is to survive with the characters that have made it there with you. You will try and crossbreed different crops, which is one of the main gameplay loops in this one, while also crafting, fishing, cooking, painting, or engaging in pretty much a lot of gameplay features. The art style is very cute here and I feel like this is another game that is slept on most of the time. It's not anything groundbreaking in the sense of like, oh my god, if you don't play this game, you're missing out on everything, but still, it does deserve more love than it gets. Now, I want to say at Epic Chef is intermediate, but it's also advanced, so it's pretty much somewhere in between. And again, a farming game that I rarely see mentioned in many, many, many of the farming list videos that we see these days. This one combines cooking and farming, and it does not take itself seriously at all. In fact, if you don't like dark humor, it's probably best to avoid it, and it's just chaotic and it's very dark, but it's, I don't know, I found it really funny. And in this one, you find yourself buying this massive haunted mansion and you're trying to become a master chef. So you need to cook by using your own produce and then compete and make the judges fall in love with your dishes. The way you get different resources can be hilarious at times, but again, if you don't like dark humor, just don't play this. It is difficult when you are competing because the judge requires very specific aromas. So I did find myself sometimes having to use a guide to actually pass my exams. Otherwise, it's a really fun farming games that if you haven't played it definitely 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 look it up now let's talk about the advanced category farming games and these made it here because either they have so many gameplay mechanics that they're gonna probably overwhelm you or they're just more on the very grindy and more difficult side and the first one that i always talk about and i feel like it should be a staple in any farming game lovers library is called sunhaven this one's perfect if you love a more fantasy world with dragons angels elves and the like and you do have a linear story which is actually interesting at some points the graphics are so beautiful there are so many characters to meet and it's complex enough with the amount of crafting that you can do but there are so many tables to use and you have three freaking farms to manage and different towns and there's different currencies and so many different tables to use to craft i'm telling you it's too too much crafting <laughs> but that reminded me of too much water um if you know you know but anyways the complexity is the fun part for me but i do know that it can be overwhelming for a beginner and there are so many things that you can do you can fish you can mine you can engage in combat you can level up your character you have so many skills to excel in this is 10 out of 10 miss bubbles approved chef's kiss please play it and you know what i actually share the same love to the next game on this list which is my time at sandrock this is such an amazing hybrid rpg and farming game and i feel like its setting sets it apart from other games the desert fits the story that is unfolding in this one and it brings on some extra challenges as you do have to overcome things like sandstorms and you need to gather water to keep your machines up and running so basically you play as a builder and there is a big emphasis on crafting so farming can take the backseat at times in this one. Your aim is to help the town and progress the story and you will find yourself gathering blueprints of massive machines and there's something so satisfying about putting them together. And you also have a fun cast of romanceables. I know that my friend Anna has been freaking out about Logan so I can't wait to explore his storyline and I'm probably gonna choose to romance him next. But you also have so many fun mini games to play, an addictive ruin system which is the game's versions of mining and more. And this one just one that I would definitely recommend. Medieval Dynasty is also making it to this list and it's one of pretty much the only realistic, like very realistic looking games that you're gonna find in this list, but it's also one that I never see anybody mention. The setting is in the Middle Ages and you're building your own dynasty where you start off alone and then you slowly build a village where more people would join you. Eventually, you will get married, you're gonna have an heir who will replace you. There is lots of crafting and building so like you can literally build the houses, like manually build them rather than just place them and you have a reputation system that you need to maintain you're gonna go hunting like to get food it's really interesting it's very complex but once you get the hang of things it's 100% worth your while and I wish more people would play it
We also have Sarah and Fate, which, damn, every time I play this game, I just get my butt kicked. But to be fair, the devs warn you right off the get-go, even in the game's store page, that this game is very, very difficult to play. This is a hybrid fantasy RPG with farming mechanics, where you have to pay attention to everything around you, including reading literally everything. So if you are one of those people who just, like, clicks on, ev on dialogue and you don't read, yeah, no, nah, this won't, this, no, nah, don't do this here. You have many gameplay mechanics like training familiars to help you out. You can create potions from what you harvest in your garden. There's combat, which is pretty tricky. You also have crafting, spell casting, and more. So if you want to buy it, you love a difficult farming game, consider yourself warned because your butt is gonna get so kicked. I feel bad for you. And let's follow up this one with Kinseed, which is, it's much more chill than Sarah and Fate, but it's definitely one that I always recommend whenever I get the chance to. And this is another fantastic RPG hybrid that takes storytelling to another level. We played the opening hours on stream and it literally left us, like I, my jaw dropped. I was shocked by how good the storytelling and the cliffhanger was. Basically, you witness your character grow as you take over your own uncle's farm and make a deal with someone. I don't want to spoil things for you, but like Medieval Dynasty, you need to thrive. You have, you know, the, the kin seed. It's like a tree, the fam, like you need to prosper through the tree and through different generations. And you want to see your name just go from generation to generation. You can open up different shops and take over various occupations, which keeps things fun and fresh. The map is massive and the amount of things that you can do is insane and that's why i think it's an advanced game it's an advanced farming game because yeah i got lost most of the time as well but it was really just trying to figure out how to play it it's actually part of the fun now i can't have a best farming games list without including the beautiful graveyard keeper and yeah this one is insane because you're dealing with corpses but i mean what did you expect it's literally called graveyard keeper and while you are maintaining a graveyard you will meet an interesting cast you're gonna gather resources to craft and expand your graveyard and the medieval setting is definitely interesting because you don't even have a clock or like a date on, like a date on the calendar it's more of another version of keeping up with date and time you, you gotta play it to understand what i'm saying but it's very intimidating when you first start playing you're gonna look up some guides i mean i did but once you get the hang of things it is so hard to put down this one veil of dust is another one that mixes survival with farming rpg and from the trailer you can tell like it looks very different from the other farming games and it's set in 1860s oregon desert where you get to experience different story arcs and let me tell you this one is pretty difficult farming in the desert is already very hard you can imagine so in the beginning as you explore more and you expand the story up until you unlock magic you're just like you know what i feel like there's nothing that i can do is gonna help me survive this game so when i first started playing it i was like damn this one just doesn't give you a break does it but to be honest, the story is really interesting and I recommend that you give it a chance. And here's one that I'm just starting out, but it's really fun and I looked up at the reviews and the reviews speak for themselves and it kind of explains why I'm getting hooked on it. And it's called Slow Living with Princess. This one lets you play as someone who is banished and now he just wants to have a slow life with a princess. I don't want to spoil anything for you because the story is interesting and I believe it's adapted also from the anime which i haven't watched but you run an apothecary and you need your farm to craft medicine and make food however i put this in advance because i can tell the combat is picking up very quickly and the grinding is a little bit too much and i can see it getting worse as i play more so so far i've been having a really good time i really recommend that you check it out but if we see it next year in my top farming list games then you probably would know that this is where it started and We'll see where we end up next. Now, before we get into the farming games that I think you should avoid, let's give a bubbly shout out to our bubbly of the day. And it goes to Ante, who commented on my Visions of Mana news piece video. And he said, this was easily my most hyped announcement. I'm hoping it will be announced for Switch 2, since that's probably gonna be only console I will have at the time. And I agree with Visions of Mana. I was surprised that it doesn't have a Switch port, but then come to think of it, like, I, the Switch, my Switch has been just sitting here. I don't use it. I'm just like, I'm, I'm fed up with it. Ports are terrible on it. So I really hope we get a Switch too, but because I've lost hope on this. So yeah, 
I really hope that we do get a switch to four visions of mana. And if you want to be the bubbly of the day in the next video, all you gotta do is leave a comment below. So here are a couple of farming games that I recommend you avoid, but if you love them, it's good for you. I'm very, very, I'm very happy and excited for you, but I just, I hated those games and to each their own. And the first one is gonna be pretty much a follow-up for what I just said about the Switch and we need a Switch too. The My Time series, as much as I love My Time at Sandrock and My Time at Portia, these are running terribly on the Switch. It is like, it is blasphemous it is unacceptable it is disgusting and i'm just, no no a lot of you are like yeah but like it still runs no it doesn't who are you lying to it doesn't run at all it just it's terrible it is like no it's one thing to downgrade the graphics to make the game just run it's another when it just looks disgusting and popping everywhere lags like what the heck is this avoid it at all costs on the switch the next one that i always get attacked when i talk about it but i just i'm at a point where i'm just like you know what it is what it is it's story of seasons a wonderful life listen i love exceed games but the two of them made it to my avoid list but yeah i do have a before you buy for a wonderful life so you can understand exactly why i just despise it but this is one of the games that just made me hate the nintendo switch the npcs were so lackluster and boring the gameplay loop itself was so lacking that i just i couldn't i can't i just can't see myself recommending it to you okay Okay, I, I get it. Nostalgia is a thing, but in this day where we have amazing farming games like the ones I just listed earlier, a wonderful life is just not it. And another one from Xseed. I freaking love Xseed, okay? You, you've seen my before you guys. I love them. But Doraemon, Story of Seasons, the first one, the, no, no. That's, that's another one that, you know what? I just don't know how to play that game. If you're familiar with my channel, you know I hate feeling lost in a game and having to use a guide nonstop. This one became like having the YouTubes on one screen and then having the game on another screen and trying to figure like might as well just watch a playthrough at this point so it's another one that i would say just to avoid it i also have to add pretty princess because when i first played it i think i mentioned it the first time in my squish in the backlog video i was having a good time with it but then the more i played it the more i was like what the heck is this game and why does it cost 30 pounds not only does it feel like more of this should have easily been a mobile game. I just, again, I cannot justify paying more than 10 pounds for it. Like even 10 pounds is asking too much for this one. So yeah, there are so many customization elements, but it's just grindy and boring and it gets old very quickly. And the next one, which I also have a before you buy on it. So if you want to learn more about my experience with it is Hoko Life. And I was so freaking excited to play this one. However, you know, like when you get excited for a present, like let's say you've told your parents all year, like, please, I want a PlayStation. I want a PlayStation and they've been hinting that you're gonna get a PlayStation but then Christmas Day comes and you open the gift and you get a freaking plushie and you're like a plushie of a PlayStation you're like what the heck what 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 is that this one just felt like it I was expecting it to be a fun replacement for Animal Crossing just like Cozy Grove was instead it was extremely boring with NPCs that feel absolutely lifeless the customization options are fun but there's not much else to it and here's another one that I know a lot of you swear by, but I just couldn't get into it. I was so hyped up for this game. And when I played it on stream, it was good. But the more that I played it, the more I was just like, yeah, this one is not for me. It's Harvestella. I was so excited for it. And don't get me wrong, the story here is amazing. But I feel like, honestly, why the heck do we even have farming in this game? Why is it like, it just makes no sense. Just make it an RPG with no farming at all. Like even people always complain about my time at Sandrock and my time at Portia like you have barn animals you have different things to do and to take care of which does make it a farming game Harvestella just doesn't feel like a farming game at all the gimmick of connecting farming into this just makes no sense and when I play it I just feel stressed out my anxiety is through the roof can you just let me chill for a second skill issue not really don't say that like I don't think it's a, no it's not a skill issue it's just simply me not liking the game I get it if you love it good for you but I just no, not for me. But enough about me. Which is your best, like absolute best farming game? And which is one that you freaking do not like? Let me know in the comment section. And if you want a similar video just like this one, but it's all about cozy games divided into beginner friendly, intermediate, and advanced, check out this video next. Thank you so, so much to my YouTube and Patreon bubblies who make videos like this possible. Thank you for watching. And a shout out goes to the amazing Karoo, the games I mentioned, Jacob, Stephanie, Stephen, Dark One, and Jake Logan for going down extra mile y'all are bubbly fantastic and until next time stay bubbly